people keep talking to me about this um, pithy little story about a woman explaining what it's like to have a disabled child. And she said, I had a plan to go to Italy. And the plane landed in Holland. And I was so upset that I wasn't in Italy until I looked around and I smelled the tulips and I realized that Holland's not so bad. My plane didn't just misguidedly land in Holland, it crashed. A 47-year-old woman from Maryland was driving the Ford Focus and she was killed. Two kids in the car survived, but they're hurt. A the world I'm in is nothing like the world I had on August 15th of 2010. On August 16th in 2010, my world was completely changed. My wife is dead. My son is, for all intents and purposes, 100% dependent upon me. My 17-year-old son in there doesn't have his mother, my first two children, don't have their stepmother. I shouldn't be driving a van with a handicap uh, ramp on it. I, there's nothing about, I should be going to work. Matthew should be going camping. He should be going sleigh riding. He should have gone swimming all summer, which he didn't get to do. None of that is ever going to, I have no idea what tomorrow holds for me. And I have no idea what it's going to hold for my son. Now, there are no tulips in my Holland. I think that there are two types of people in the world. Um, there are people who have experienced this and people who haven't. And they're living parallel, but neither one can understand the other one. And the crazy thing is that the group that had this happen to them used to live like that. Life as they knew it, the happiness and the things that they did for fun and, as, and together never can be done again. The future of caregiving and restrictions and fear, terror, how, how do you measure anything like that? We're all very worried about Ed. I liken it to trying to drink out of a fire hose. So much is coming at him at one time. It's hard to imagine for me what you know, Ed's really going through. He is alone. He depended on Susie for so much and her on him. But his little crutch is gone. Ed, Ed will have to be in a coping mode for the rest of his life. To have lost the effervescent, joyful child and to give all of his love to the new child, but to not even really know who the new child is. So I called him, I said, Ed, how are things? And I just burst into tears and then he goes, Ann, because what, what's the matter? I said, I just kept thinking by the time Matthew came home, he'd be walking, he'd be knowing us, he'd be, because everybody he just, in your mind, even though the realist, when you look at him, the realism is, you know, it could never, there's too much of a gap between what you want and what is there. Well, that, I think when somebody comes home from the hospital that they're better. And Ed actually said to me, he goes, Ann, I know it's got to be harder for you guys being away. I said, how could it be harder for us? Because I get to see those little things, and I get to hold him, and I get to have him here. He gets so much joy with seeing Matthew in the house and being able to lift his finger. And you think, to go from what he had with Matthew to finding joy in that is just, you know, he takes going. incredible strength. At this point, I can't see that he is changing his ability to swallow, so he'll probably be on his tube feeds for the rest of his life. See that mess in there? That's Peter's room. He's unable to void right to there. clear his urine, so he has to have catheterization every four hours around the clock. This is your house. You have the biggest room in the house. He will need perpetual nursing care around the clock support for the rest of his life. Everything has changed. I can't remember what it was like to wake up on the morning of August 16th and just get ready for work and go to work. I can't even, literally, cannot wrap my mind around what that might have been like. Your favorite books from when you were little and mommy put the covers in picture frames, remember? 
Do you see them? Oh, honey, it's okay. It's okay. You miss mommy? Me too. Every day, honey. We are robbed. And the world is robbed of Susan and Matthew and all of the energy that my dad is now spending on this wasted, just wasted. I can catheterize my son, I can suction my son, I can change his trach, I can put him on a vent. I know how to feed him through a G-tube, I know how to give him his medications, and I know about respiration rates and oxygen sats, and I'm learning about the different medications that, that might be of help to him, and I have to make decisions about whether we want to try this thing or that thing. Well, I joke that I'm an MD, uh, Matthew's dad. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, you get up every morning and you have to face that. And no matter what help and everything you have, which is fabulous, at the end of the day, you are alone with that little boy. Okay, ready? Up oh, we go, up oh, we go. There you go, standing up at home. Good job, good job. You're collapsing on me, bud. I always told my kids that the measure of a person isn't the mess they get into, but how they handle it once they're in it. We didn't deserve this mess, but we try to muster as much grace as we can. God forbid I ever have to lose a child. God help those that already have lost a child. In some ways, Ed loses his child every single day. Every day he sees them. He's lost who he had before, and he has to live with who he has. That's the worst of all situations in my mind. We got some things to figure out in here, like how we're gonna get a TV up for you. And we need a tray table. And we gotta get rid of this ridiculous bed and get you a much, much better bed. In fact, I think I'm gonna get a double wide bed so 